So with accelerating inflation hitting an 18-year high in Nigeria, debt servicing consuming 98% of revenue, incomes and savings fast eroding and price pressures squashing everybody, to what extent is disaster looming just ahead? Well, for years now, the Nigerian economy has been battered by fragile growth, weakened public finances and large deficits, leaving the previous government reliant on local and foreign loans to plug holes in its budgets. But the Tinubu administration, which took over in May, has promised to expand the economy by at least 6% a year, lift barriers to investment and create jobs. But how growth can be kick-started with the Naira weakening to record lows, inflation soaring and a cost of living crisis worsening remains to be seen. Well, according to the Minister of Finance, Wale Edung, who is also the coordinator of the economy, Nigeria must seize the initiative to generate more revenue while at the same time show determination to reduce the current high deficit financing. In the environment that we have now, both internationally as well as uh, uh, nationally, we are in no position to rely on borrowing. We have an existing borrowing program, and as Distinguished Senator Abiru has said, our attempt and our direction of travel is to reduce reliance on borrowing, reduce the uh, quantum and the percentage of deficit financing in the 2024 budget. Government needs to not just uh, maintain its activity, it needs to spend more. So government needs even more. If you look at uh, government spending, if you look at the budget as a percentage of GDP, ours is one of the lowest, maybe around 10%. Even Ghana is at 25%. Well, for more on this, I'm joined now from our studios in Lagos by the macroeconomic analyst and publisher of Business Day newspaper, Frank Ibogan. Uh, Mr. Ibogan, thank you very much indeed for joining us. We do appreciate your presence very much indeed. So, according to the Minister of Finance and the Economy, Wale Edu, Nigeria is not in a good position to continue to rely on borrowing. What's your reaction to that? Well, I mean, after so many years of borrowing and borrowing essentially to fund uh, consumption, I think it makes sense to begin to um, take a new direction. Um, we, can con we cannot continue to borrow. We need, as they say, to begin to think about cutting our cloth to our size. So I um, align with the views of the finance minister that Nigeria cannot borrow endlessly, especially the way it has done in the past. And of course, um, for that to be achieved, that cutting our cloth um, you know, accordingly, there must be austerity, mustn't there? I mean, the cost of governance, for instance, has to dramatically come down. Pre pre precisely, Charles, there's no question about that. And I think that is um, a major problem that many people have, uh, that the government's uh, own message is being compromised by contradictions. You cannot ask Nigerians to tighten their belt and you then give license to people in government, whether it be in the executive, or in uh, the legislature to spend as much as they want to spend as if spending is getting out of uh, fancy. So yes, um, we all must tighten our belt. Uh, we can't rely on borrowing, but that call to tighten a belt uh, must uh, be a call that applies to all spectrums of the Nigerian society. The people in their homes, the businesses, and of course, uh, government officials as well. And of course, uh, austerity is clearly one way of uh, saving money and hopefully generating revenue. But 
I mean, where else should Nigeria get the money from if it isn't borrowing? I mean, can the country live within the limits of the money it is generating based on your knowledge of these things? Well, Charles, I mean, let's, um, you know, one of the things that the Minister of Finance has also said uh, is the fact that um, Nigeria has a significant um, array of assets that we call debt, dead capital. That's capital or assets just lying waste all across the country. And even by his own estimate, they are in trillions of naira. Remember that when in uh, May, precisely in his um, inaugural address, the president announced to everyone that subsidy is gone. It was partly to deal with the fiscal crisis that Nigeria was in. And it was meant, we were told, to save something in the region of 4 trillion naira a year minimum. When, as he said, um, the currency was also adjusted with the convergence of rates, it was also thought that significant you know, cash will flow to government by halting what was easily a subsidy on Forex uh, for the lucky people who were able to assess it at the official rate. So those two measures were meant to significantly uh, ease the fiscal crisis that Nigeria is in. And I must say that I believe that that is gradually beginning to show. But there is also the crisis of foreign exchange, which cannot be dealt with internally, at least not in the short term. We have had a number of announcements or pronouncements from government or government officials about engagements with foreign organizations, foreign countries, you know, seeking uh, um, uh, uh, with them um, an immediate foreign exchange lifeline to get our industries back in shape, uh, to get trade and commerce all over again, in the hope that we can, you know, catalyze uh, productivity and increase economic activity, grow GDP, and uh, by good management, ensure inclusive economic expansion. So I think that um, in the short term, that's what we must do. That might, if you like, amount to some short-term borrowing. There is the idea of um, securitizing um, future earnings of, the, of our own portion of um, uh, uh, earnings from uh, the liquefied natural gas, uh, 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 for instance. And there are also indication that um, there is room to still, you know, borrow uh, 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 on account of future uh, um, crude oil sale. So, you know, I mean, if we can get something in the neighborhood of 10 to 15 billion dollars in the process, I right. believe that that can help us to restart the economy. So, I mean, broadly... But easily... Right, go ahead. Yes, easily, that will only help for a time. You must begin to ramp up oil production um, so that you can begin to fund future foreign exchange need. You can continue to borrow, uh, uh, certainly without a question. Right. Well, broadly speaking, uh, Mr. Ibogan, I mean, what is your assessment of how the Tinubu government has started the process of managing Nigeria's economy? Because I've heard some fairly notable economists talking about a misalignment between policy direction and economic destination and suggesting that the administration is used to a sub-national experience at the state level and that that is not enough to run the economy at the federal and national level and that states do not have macro level experience in things like growth, inflation, exchange rate, management of external obligations, etc. What are your thoughts on that? 
Well, I mean, I don't, I don't want to get into the politics of um, whether the president had a national, uh, you know, uh, 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 exper experience at a national level or at a sub-regional level. I mean, President Bill Clinton was a governor when he became when he became president of the United States. Somehow, people do come on to the central government from regional government. So I don't think that is a disadvantage. What we should expect is uh, wherever the president has come from, once he gets there, then he must, you know, hit the ground running. Um, it is almost six months now since the announcement that subsidy is gone and that uh, the foreign exchange rates will be merged. Um, six months after, we begin now to imagine that that policy was not properly thought through. Um, so when you talk about a misalignment today, that perhaps is what people are alluding to. That once you took out subsidy on petroleum and you also converged the rates, um, at some point, the rubber will hit the road, as indeed uh, has in Nigeria. And we now can see that somehow the subsidy that went out through the window has come back in some form or format, uh, 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 you know, um, and, and, and we have to deal with that. But I also believe that um, you are seeing some good signs. Um, but you know, Charles, it's like we both look at the same cup and one says it is a cup half empty and another says it is a cup half full. It just depends on, on your mindset and upon your expectation. Nigerians have easily become very cynical on the basis of the experience that we have had, especially the disastrous last eight years. And also because, you know, when you get out of the rain and go under a shade, it takes quite a while before your body gets dried. So there is still that effect that we have. It's as if, you know, uh, things are still very bad. And indeed, we all feel that things are still very bad. But I believe that um, the government is making the right noises. Uh, some of them are disjointed. We need to see joined up thinking in government, everyone in government coming together uh, and heading in the same direction. Uh, in terms of um, execution, we want to see that. Um, and, I, and, I be, and I believe that um, why there appears to be uh, some progress um, until we can bring in some significant foreign exchange to keep um, the volatility of, of the Naira under control, I think it will be difficult for you to see progress uh, 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 by way of economic management. That's an exceedingly good point. Um, and as you continue to assess the policy pronouncements of the government, I mean, I remember talking to you a few years ago and you were telling me how important it is to send the right signals through policies to investors both at home and abroad. Are you seeing those right signals being sent to the business and investment community both at home and ab abroad? I mean, we've seen a, a flurry of trips abroad, I mean, to places like Saudi Arabia, etc. I think uh, it's, a, it's a missed bag of sorts. Um, we have seen the president, and rightly so, engage with uh, his counterparts around the world, uh, whether it's in India, whether it's in um, Saudi Arabia. Um, so that's, that's good. I think the president must um, uh, be uh, seen to be the chief salesman you know, for Nigeria, and he has to be out there. There is also the announcement that he's on his way to Germany uh, for the G20 uh, 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 engagement with Africa. That's quite good. Um, you know, you have to be at the table. If you are not there, no one is going to speak for you. So that's good. I think the only problem is that these engagements need better coordination. Uh, the messaging needs to be tight and proper. Uh, I think in some cases you have seen um, messages go out and then you come back only to see that nothing really was achieved. 
I think that's, that's, that's problematic. Uh, we need to begin to now show signs that Nigeria is open for business, not just talking about it. Uh, we need, for instance, six months after the inauguration of this president, one major area that Nigerians expected to see impact is in the area of oil production. So far, I think we are just dancing around the edges. NNPC that got us into this mess needs to be cleaned up. I think there needs to be a new leadership enthroned at NNPC, a leadership that is result-oriented, not giving excuses, a leadership that appreciates that Nigeria's economy has been brought to its knees partly by the massive failure of the uh, state uh, of the state owned oil company we are not saying that and foreign investors are watching um, when you see things happening today at, at at meetings around the world foreign investors will come to listen to the story about nigeria after the story is told they go back they are still waiting for major signs that Nigeria is ready to engage with the world. So far, I don't think um, that persuasion is ringing as loud as it should. Right, and, and uh, briefly, uh, Mr. Ibogan, because we're almost out of time, it's great talking with you. I mean, inflation now at 27.33%. It is going up, and dangerously so. Food inflation is even worse. It's an all -time, at an all-time high. Um, with the inflation rate spiking as much as it is, I imagine that high interest rates are going to follow and keep going up in order to try and check inflation. And that will make economic growth near impossible, won't it? It, it, it will, painfully, you know, so as well. Um, we at Business Day did a story yesterday saying that inflation is uh, halved in the UK. Inflation has fallen Dramatically in the US, even in the neighboring country, Ghana, inflation is easing. It is not the case in Nigeria. So it, 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 it's paradoxical. We are doing the same thing that you know, central banks around the world are doing, but we are getting the opposite result. And it's a measure of the mess called economic management that we saw over the last eight years. Completely mis complete misalignment. And you, not, you need now to begin to see proper alignment for monetary policy you know, um, to begin to be effective. But until that time, for instance, a cessation of the madness called ways and means, or borrowing from the central bank, or if you like, simply printing of the Naira, until we can end that, um, and, and then you begin to put in place some good measures um, to increase agricultural production, to improve storage, and ensure that the um, uh, agricultural product goes straight to the market rather than lying waste you know, along the way. Uh, you are going to continue to have um, interest rate go up, and yet, uh, the impact that you get is not, is not a salutary effect of, uh, of inflation going down. Frank, I want to thank you very much indeed. It's been absolutely brilliant talking with you, hugely um, enlightening. Uh, Frank Ibogan is a macroeconomic analyst and publisher of Business Day newspaper. Thank you very much indeed. And he was talking to me there from our studios in Lagos.